again friends. Here we are back again in the Living in Faith Everyday podcast, the Life podcast, and we're working together through the series I've entitled 66 Books, 66 short podcasts which give a brief overview of the 56 books of our Bible. And today we've reached the book of 1 Timothy, the book about conduct within the church. First Timothy is one of what is often referred to as a pastoral epistle. This expression originated in the 18th century. There are two other pastoral epistles. They are 2 Timothy and Titus. First Timothy has also been called by some a leadership manual for the church. The view of the author is very straightforward. The opening verse declares that Paul is the author and historians and church tradition supports that view. But who was it written to? Well, as the title suggests, this was the first of two letters sent to Timothy at Ephesus, but Paul intended it to be used by the church as well. The book of Acts closed with Paul in prison in Rome. The history of the remainder of his life can be put together from glimpses in the New Testament texts and a few statements outside of it. Apparently he was released from his first Roman imprisonment. He anticipated that, we know that from his writing, and the pastoral epistles also show that expectation. He probably sent Timothy to Philippi with the good news of his release as he promised he would. After that he went and visited other churches in the area, perhaps Colossae and a few others. When he returned to Ephesus, Paul found false teaching there, as he'd predicted in Acts 20, verse 29 and 30. He personally dealt with the leaders of that trouble, but anticipated fully that there would be further difficulty to come. When he left Macedonia, he had put Timothy in charge in that situation. Once he saw that he was going to be delayed in his return there, He decided to write 1 Timothy, possibly from Philippi in 62 AD. From what is is said, 1 Timothy as well as 2 Timothy and in Titus, it is evident that some people there were going into the genealogies of the Old Testament and constructing false fables about themselves based on them. From these ideas they taught things like you must abstain from marriage and from meat, Now this kind of teaching was a departure from the faith which Paul knew was meant to produce godliness, not this form of legalistic rule following. The subject of the book is the charge that he wants to make to Timothy on the ongoing conduct at that church. The message is church leaders are to refute error and to teach the truth which should lead to godliness. These self-appointed Old Testament so-called experts were causing much harm in the church with false teaching based on nothing more than ancient myths, legends, laws and genealogies. Some of the teaching was so damaging that Paul tells Timothy the only way to deal with the offender was to put them out of the church. The structure of 1 Timothy is a letter, but it doesn't follow that format precisely. For one thing there is no prayer, for another the thanksgiving is for what God has done for the author not for the recipients, as is usually the case. So the letter opens with a general greeting and introduction, and then our warning against false teachers. From chapter 2 to chapter 4, there's some teaching on church leadership and how teaching should be done in the church. And then chapter 5 and 6, he talks about the various types of people that are found in the church, and then closes the letter with a conclusion and benediction. So the first purpose of 1 Timothy was to encourage Timothy to stand firm and refute error. Timothy did not particularly need enlightenment concerning this error. He knew what it was, he just needed encouragement in dealing with it. The second purpose of Timothy is that once he's done that is to encourage him to teach the truth. Paul never dealt with the negative without also giving the positive. 
He wants Timothy to stand up against error, but he also wants to encourage him to teach the truth. The truth in this case is the doctrine spelled out in this letter, a true faith which leads to a pure life and a good conscience which leads to godliness and love. So in summary, Paul writes to Timothy to charge him, to inspire him, to stand up and refute error, but also to teach the truth. A truth which leads to godliness. A truth which produces faith. A truth which results in a pure heart, a clear consciousness, an expression of true godliness and love. <laughs>